So now I'm going to explain for you the subtle differences between different signal-to-noise ratios. So I'm going to take the signal-to-noise ratio, the standard one used in the analog domain, um, SNR we use typically, and EB over N0, energy per bit, um, and explain how one that comes from the analog world, one comes from the digital world, and to explain what the relationship is between the two and to give you an equation that lets you easily uh, switch from one representation to the other. So this is covered in section three, uh, chapter three, sections 14 and 15 of the Sklar uh, textbook. So um, signal to noise ratio, let's, let's start with that. Signal to noise ratio is by definition the average signal power divided by the average noise power. Signal power divided by noise power. Um, now, if we go to another signal-to-noise ratio, because I'm going to have a numerator, which is signal, a denominator, which is noise, which sounds like a signal-to-noise ratio, but it's, it's standardized by bit, which is really only applicable to um, digital communications. Here, this is a definition that could be used for digital or analog, but this is really strictly digital. And I'd like to show you what's the relationship between the two, because uh, when you see it plotted, uh, one or the other could be used for, for various reasons. So first let's start with the numerator, which is about the signal. And let's talk about EB, energy per bit, versus um, the average signal power, S. So this is the average energy per bit. This is the average signal power. So the relationship is simple. I take the average signal power, and I multiply it by the time for a bit, and that gives me the energy uh, per bit. Uh, so this uh, is another way to say is that the signal power is the energy per bit divided by the, the time uh, of that, that bit energy. So this just comes from uh, simple definitions. Now, the time per bit, this TB, is sort of the, the critical parameter that is available in a digital system because there's a bit is quantified and it's sent during a different time that is key to relating these two together, right? So the time of a bit is the key factor from the digital world. Now let's look at N0 versus N. So N0 is the power density. Okay, so if I say that I have additive white Gaussian noise, I know that in the frequency domain, the additive white Gaussian noise is flat, okay? So that gives me N0. Now N is the noise in a given uh, bandwidth. So if I take this as a certain bandwidth, then this area would be the noise. So in order to um, go from, this is the density, it's noise per bandwidth whereas noise is just the, the noise in a given bandwidth. So here, it's the uh, bandwidth, which is the uh, key parameter relating uh, the two. But of course, my transition rate, which comes from TB, and my occupied bandwidth are related to one another, and so uh, this, is, this is how we can um, uh, see the transition from um, a, an arbitrary, not necessarily uh, digital, into a digital communications, and why we have these two different standardized per bit or, or an analog type. Of. So now let's go from SNR to EB over N0. So SNR is S divided by N, and we have our two expressions for S and N and how they relate to the terms in digital domain. So the S is EB over TB. And the N is N0 times the bandwidth. And now I'm going to isolate the EB over N0. Push that to the side. And now I've got TB divided by bandwidth. So I'm going to think of that in terms of 1 over TB being RB, the bit rate. And so now I have EB over N0, and I have this RB over bandwidth. Now RB, the, to the, the bit rate, divided by the occupied bandwidth is what I call the efficiency, so the spectral efficiency. So the difference between an SNR and an EB over N0 is this term of spectral efficiency. And of course, that term will vary by 
um, modulation format. And also, remember the modulation formats assume that you have um, perfect, uh, that you have a sync pulse in the time domain and that you have the minimum bandwidth, but of course in another situation it might be different. But uh, this does give us a way of converting between uh, EB over N0 and SNR. Let's take a specific example of one modulation format. Let's take MQAM or MPSK. They have the same um, spectral efficiency. So in this case, it's log 2M is the spectral efficiency for QAM or MPSK. Uh, so if I wanted to go from the SNR, EB over N0 to SNR, I would just multiply uh, by log 2M. And of course, SNR is usually given in dB. And if I put everything in dB, that means that the EB over N0 in dB would be the SNR in dB minus 10 log 10 of uh, K, which is the number of bits uh, per symbol. And again, this is for MQAM and MPSK. Let's take a simple example. Suppose I have a phone line, and I go out on my telephone line, and I measure with a, um, a meter that I have something like 35 dB of SNR. Okay, so now I know the dB SNR. And I want to know what would be um, the symbol error rate, uh, not BER, but SER, symbol error rate, if I use 256 QAM in this, uh, in, in this um, SNR region. So in order to do that calculation, I start by saying, well, uh, what is the bit rate that I could attain with 256 QAM? Or what's the difference, what's the relationship between RB and RS? And of course, 256 QAM, there's eight bits per symbol. And so with eight bits per symbol, that's the difference between, uh, R, that's the ratio between RS and RB. So if I want to tie, take the signal to noise ratio, and I want to turn it into EB over N0, what I would do is I would say that it's eight times the uh, symbol uh, rate divided by W, and if I was the most spectrally efficient, then W, of course, would be RS, uh, or we could get directly to the equation I just gave you. <laughs> so here I just assumed along the way uh, that the occupied bandwidth was RS, uh, or I could have used my equation for QAM, we have gotten there directly. So basically the EB over N0 would be 35 dB minus 10 log 10 of 8, as the equation we had previously, which gives me 26 dB. So I know that my EB over N0 is 26 dB, even though my uh, SNR was 35 dB. Now, I wonder what kind of performance I can have. So now I go back to this gold standard and I compare 256 QAM to QPSK, and I understand that it needs 13.3 dB more uh, than QPSK for a given um, uh, performance level. So that means that I would need, um, if I look at, I have 26 dB available to me, EB over N0 for 256 QAM. It's like I had QPSK and I only had 12.7 uh, dB of EB over, S and, uh, EB over N0 available to me, right? Because I, I do have 26 dB, but I'm sending 256 QAM. So it's as if I was sending QPSK, but I only had 12.7 dB. So now I go to my uh, curve for QPSK, and I say I have 12.7 dB, and I say, great, for that I can get 10 to the minus 9. So now I know that for this system, using 256 QAM, that I can achieve 10 to the minus 9 uh, symbol error rate with the SNR of 35 dB. Now, I showed you to it with the curve because uh, it can be very handy. But if you, if you have a curve lying around, but you don't have MATLAB lying around. But if you have MATLAB lying around, then you can go directly to the equation here. And you can say, um, you know, for m equal 256, you can plug that in and do it directly from, from MATLAB. But the other way is it could be quicker if you have a, a plot. So if I went to MATLAB, I would just plot directly the curve for 256K. So here is the curve for QPSK. Here is the curve for 256. Of course, we can see right there the loss that we were talking about. So they're going to give you the same results. I put in 26 dB, I get 10 to the minus 9. So direct calculation or the other, give the same result. Here's a second example. Suppose I said 
uh, the bandwidth I have available is only uh, 2,400 hertz. Okay, so this was the original telephone twisted pair before they tried to uh, eliminate components which were limiting the bandwidth. So this was in the first years of modems what was available. And so given that I have this bandwidth available to me, what would be the bit rate that I could achieve if I used 256 quam? Okay. So now it's just about bit rate. Has not, it's just about spectral efficiency. I'm not talking about SNR, even though this is a section about SNR. Now I'm just saying that different uh, situations you get different uh, approaches. So I only have 2,400 hertz available to me. The, the symbol rate, the highest I can go, is 2,400 symbols per second, because that's all the bandwidth I have. I have no more. Spectrally efficient, Nyquist, that's the best I can do. I have 8 bits uh, per symbol for 256 quam, so that means that the highest rate that I could get would be 19.2 kilobits per second. And remember, when I was going over the history of the development for a phone line, uh, that was the best uh, that we could do until we enhanced the bandwidth up to 8,000 by eliminating some components.